So there's the moon right there. Beautiful day. Uh, February 19th, 2024. And I just wanted to let you know that I, we did a really great program at the library just the other day. And I'm going to show you that video. It's all about the eclipse coming up in April. And if you live in Texas, you're going to be getting 100% coverage and it's going to be going up uh, in a curve all the way up to New Hampshire and I guess northern New Hampshire gets about 100% coverage um, It's gonna be quite interesting. We had a thing at our library and There's a man in New Hampshire that told us all about it So I hope you enjoy this video all about the eclipse now you need to be ready Because it's well the guy in the video tells you all about it being ready thinking ahead he was trying to put a bill in in New Hampshire for um, all the kids to be able to take the day off. That didn't work out. But sharing the news and letting people know what's coming up is second best. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what you think. Make a comment below. Thanks so much. Have a great day. stand up for a small group. I'm going to be seated. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for coming out tonight and uh, hearing about Sight of a Lifetime uh, upcoming. Uh, I believe it's 53 days away. So I started working on it about nine years ago, so this is a very exciting time for me. <laughs> very, very exciting. So this, oop, that's my hat, sorry about that. So this is it, my name is Rick Eames. I'm the founder and chief visionary officer of the New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force. We formed uh, back in 2018, 2019, when after the last Big eclipse. Does everyone remember the one back in 2017 in August? Yeah. yeah. That was about 65% here in New Hampshire. Um, this one is going to be 96% and up for New Hampshire. So when I realized that the next one in 17 <coughs> years was coming to us and I didn't have to chase it, that's when I started working with Eclipse Mobile. Governor Sununu signed first in the nation solar eclipse day bill. Very, very exciting. So um, that's when I started working on it. And my co-founder and colleague, Dave McDonald, he is um, working on a video with high school students tonight and doing a filming part of it. So he was unable to make it. And so I have to fill in. I'll be doing his parts as well as my parts. And any questions you folks have, if it's a small enough group, just stop and ask me. Go ahead. Um, I heard that when I looked it up, it said it was going to be like 100% over Texas. Is that correct? Or no? That's correct. Okay. So, But we're path. 90s? I thought we were going to be less than 90s. Yeah. Well, the path, it goes 100% from Mexico to Newfoundland. Okay. It's a path. So at sunrise or early morning, it's down in Mexico. At sunset, late afternoon, it's in... Uh, Newfoundland, Canada. So it's just like oh, as the okay. sun moves across with the moon eclipsing the sun, the path travels across North America. So it's very, very cool. And so these are the two. Let me go to the next slide here. This is you guys. That's where we are. So this is for the kids and young at heart and the crowd. Dad, can you explain to me what a solar like eclipse is? <clears throat> Very simple. This is from my colleague. This is not mine. No son. That's exactly <laughs> it. With a, he's the king of puns. I'm sort of the prince of puns. I have a couple, but not quite as many as he does. <laughs> so these two numbers are pretty important. Um, the first one is 53. And that's the number of days until the total solar eclipse on Monday, April 8th, 2024. And um, if you miss that one, you got a little bit of a wait. Because the next one in New Hampshire 
is May 1st, 2079, 55 years from now, or 20,151. Now, I do always ask, um, does anyone remember hearing about? Um, you've got to be about 75 or older to view it, but the last total solar <coughs> eclipse in New Hampshire, which was in October of 1959. Does anyone remember hearing about that or seeing it? <coughs> Nope. Okay. Don't look Before at me. That, I'm not seventy something yet. <laughs> well, you might. Young kids sometimes their parents or grandparents tell them about it. That's true. Uh, I've met three people so far who viewed it. One in Concord, one in Lebanon. Not sure where the third person seen it. I have yet to reach someone seventy-five or eighty or older who remembers back then older relatives or older adults in their sphere mm -hmm. telling them about the 1932 total solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. And if you look up here, <laughs> this poster is actually from that eclipse. Yeah, and if you notice the bottom line, mm -hmm. make your reservations early, even back then. The still. Mm -hmm. Do not wait. So we have a solar eclipse time capsule, and this is especially, could I ask how old you are? Eleven. Eleven? Okay, so in 2079, May 1st, you want to make sure you're in Concord, New Hampshire, preferably at the McCulloch Shepherd Discovery Center, because that's the next eclipse. You'll be 66 years old, and if you put one of the items into the solar eclipse time capsule, you'll be there when it comes out of the ground. So it's pretty cool. We, I will not be there. I won't speak for anyone else. I'm not going to make a hundred and ninety. We're all dead. Watch it from somewhere else. Memories, that's it. So what is an eclipse? An eclipse is an astronomical, astronomical event that occurs when an astronomical object is temporarily obscured by the shadow of another body. So basically it's a giant shadow. But the shadow of the moon on the Earth during a total solar eclipse I can attest it's the biggest shadow I'll ever see. And I think for most people on the planet, this is the biggest shadow you're ever going to see. So it's very simple, but very <coughs> impressive. And this is not to scale, but we're just going to review three main types of eclipses and what they do. Here you've got the sun far off to the right, and then two positions of the moon and the earth in the center. And a total lunar eclipse is when Earth's shadow falls on the moon. And you'll notice that it's a big shadow. Has anyone ever seen a total lunar eclipse? Usually the moon looks a reddish or orange color, if you recall it. And the way everyone on the night side of the Earth during, during a total lunar eclipse is going to see at least a partial and potentially millions tens or hundreds of millions of people will see a full lunar eclipse. So it's very, they're, they're a little more rarer, I think, technically, than solar eclipses, but so many more people can see them, it's not as uncommon an event. And that occurs during a full moon. Everyone on Earth's night side can see it. Now, a total solar eclipse is when the moon shadow falls on the Earth. And if you look, the shadow on the moon is huge. It totally covers the moon, but the moon is so much smaller, if you look, the shadow is a lot, lot narrower, about 100 to 150 miles wide. It's long, thousands of miles, but it's very, very narrow. That's why we want to tell everyone to get to the path of totality if you can. And that occurs with a new moon, whereas a lunar eclipse occurs and the difference is instead of half the population of the planet or approximately being able to see it, less than 0.1% of Earth's population can see it, unless you're in a crazy eclipse chaser like me and some of my colleagues, and we will chase them because they are so rare and so special. So why don't we have a lunar eclipse at every full moon and a solar eclipse at every new moon? two or three every month. <coughs> and the whole reason we don't is because the moon's orbit is tilted about five degrees relative to the ecliptic when the sun and moon match up. To get 
eclipses, you need a perfect alignment of sun, moon, and earth. And it's passing, descending, ascending nodes, but unless you hit it just right, when the path crosses that red line, you will not get an eclipse. And, you know, most of the time you don't. So these are the three types of eclipses. And as I like to say, I'm the Pied Piper of Pizza Piece and Penumbras, and that's where that P comes in. And you'll see the sun, the moon, with the shadow on the earth, a total solar eclipse, the shadow actually hits the Earth. During an annular eclipse, the middle one, the moon is a little bit farther away in its oval orbit around the Earth, and the point doesn't make it to the surface of the Earth. So then you see what's called an annular eclipse or a ring of fire. And we actually had one of those just about five months ago now, back on October 14th, 2023. And I have some slides. I was out in Bluff, Utah for that one. It was live streamed. That was sort of our warm up for our dress rehearsal for the event in 53 days. They're, they're pretty cool, but they're really a special partial. The partial is at the bottom where you don't see the ring of fire or totality, the corona, but it still looks pretty cool. And us chasers like to say, we'll step outside for a partial. <laughs> We'll travel within our continent, our country, for an annular, but for a total, we'll travel the world. And again, those are the three types. And this is really fascinating. Cosmic coincidence. The whole reason we get eclipses is because while the moon is only one four hundred the size of the sun diameter wise, and you'd have to line up 400 moons to cross the sun, it is also 400 times closer to us mm. than the sun. So that one to 400 ratio, it's a cosmic coincidence. Um, that's why we have eclipses. And if you think about it, everybody looks at the full moon quite a bit. When you have your glasses or you're looking <coughs> through a solar scope at the sun, you'll notice it's about the same size as a full moon. Now it's a lot farther away, it's a lot bigger, but because of that one to 400 ratio, here on Earth they appear to us the same size, and that's when they match up, we get eclipses. That's why that occurs. So, bonus question here, what type of eclipse is it when the sun, the big sun, is between the moon and the earth. Anyone know what type of eclipse it would be if you had the sun between the moon and earth? No, 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 no. Lunar eclipse is sun, earth, moon. Solar eclipse is sun, moon, earth. But this eclipse, the sun is between oh, okay. the earth and That's oh an apocalypse. Uh, uh, we I was never, like, something wrong we with that never want to see that. <laughs> so that, that's, oh, that's uh, good. I don't know where that came from, but we don't want to see <laughs> that type of That was a trick question. We so, won't. We I won't. We probably went very, 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 yeah, that would, that would be very that's important. Right. So the New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force, we've been working on this for a number of years. We put together a bill proclamations, we have a song, we have Eclipse Mobile Ditty. Um, me and Dave are the co-founders, but we have a number of members on it, and all our goal is, is I'm a solar eclipse evangelist, community outreach specialist, we just want to spread the word. We want to let people know so that they can plan, they can figure out, well, where am I going to be? Do I know anyone in Burlington, Vermont? Do I know anyone north of Bangor, Maine? Do I know anyone up in Pittsburgh? If you do, it's a good time to call them and ask to come for a visit on that weekend. Because finding a hotel room or Airbnb or camping yeah, the in early April is, up is going to be really, really tough. Weeks. I had my 11 bedrooms reserved about three years ago. And Judy wow. Dalton at Mountain View Cabins up in Pittsburgh, she thought I was a little crazy three years ago when I said, look, 
she said, you don't have to pay any money. I'm fine, just hold those 11 rooms for me. Now, she's not thinking I'm too crazy. <laughs> so. What is the difference between seeing the eclipse here in southern New Hampshire compared to up in Pittsburgh or Columbus? So southern New Hampshire is a lightning round. Pretty cool. But Pittsburgh, Colebrook, Lancaster, Northumberland, Groveton, Dummer, Clarksville, Errol, Milan, that's lightning. So down here, it's hearing someone eating an ice cream sundae, seeing it, smelling it, listening to the sounds they're making. Up north, it's eating the ice cream sundae. What visually would be different? I mean, it's yeah, so we'll get into okay. that. The last, it's going to get dark down here. Um, we'll, we'll go through, but basically Salem is 96%, and that's the least coverage in New Hampshire. Manchester is, I'm sorry, Salem is 95, Manchester is 96, Concord, 96.5, um, Laconia, 97, Plymouth, 98, uh, Bartlett, Bretton Woods, Hearts Location, 99, but the jackpot is above Lancaster. And How about upstate New York? Island. Absolutely. I have a book you, you can look Albany. at. Rochester. Okay, yeah. No, it's gotta be, it's got it's really going over the twin lakes. Is so it's it? going over Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Really? So yeah, anywhere near there, Albany. Ontario, um, you have friends in Canada, PEI, a third of the island mm -hmm. has it, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, anywhere along there is where you want. So this is me, um, mm -hmm. basically bitten by the eclipse bug in 2015 after, and 2017 after getting out to Casper. I just warn you, if you get bitten by the eclipse bug, it's a lifelong mm. infection. So, uh, but the way I look at it, there are much worse things to be addicted to than eclipses. So I'll go with eclipses. I was in Casper, Wyoming, um, NASA Solar Eclipse Ambassador, and my day job, 37 years at Domino um, as a franchisee of two stores in Concord. And I'm passionate about peace, and that's how I ended up five right from Pizza Peace. And this is our group out in Casper, Wyoming. We were about 4,000 feet above the valley floor, and this is between stage two and stage three during totality. Or it might have been before, it's before totality, because it's still yeah. blue sky. And we picked that spot because we wanted to see the shadow race across the valley floor. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that, but we still saw shadow bands, and we had perfectly clear skies. It was uh, very, very nice. So that was my group. And then this is my colleague, who unfortunately wasn't able to be here tonight because he's doing that high school solar eclipse ambassador video. Um, and he's really sort of the technical guy on the community reach guy, but he's a director at New Hampshire Astronomical Society, senior educator at uh, MSDC, STEM astronomy teacher at Belmont High. He has a cable TV show called The Sky This Morning, which has a lot of eclipse on it. You can just search for that. Uh, is water it YouTube skis. available? I believe it is. Cool. So if you just, yeah. The Sky This Month, and he has not only eclipse stuff, a lot of other astronomers, some very, very yeah. cool stuff. And this is Dave and Linda and their daughter Sally. They went to Hopkinson, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Now my pictures are not my own. All these pictures in the next couple slides are what he took. So very, you know, a lot of equipment and stuff like that. And uh, they got in there okay getting out. It took them a little bit of time. Our, our motto is arrive early, leave late. You the one time, if you get to totality, you want to get there as early as possible, but you don't want to try to leave on Monday. You want to stay another night and leave on Tuesday. Because all you're going to do on Monday for most locations is drive a quarter mile down the road and then sit there for hours. So you might as well sit where you are Monday night. You could watch my Yukon Huskies, hopefully repeat as men's NCAA champs. Yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah. Have a Corona beer or Mount Gay Eclipse rum if you're old enough and celebrate. I survived the eclipse. Um, I rarely recommend not going to any area, 
I will say, however, Cleveland is really going to be crazy for this because they're in the path of totality. Mm -hmm. They have the women's NCAA finals oh on God. Sunday night. And they just announced that the Cleveland Guardians are doing opening. I guess it's going to be a day-night day game on Monday, Eclipse Day. So uh, the Guardians are playing in Minnesota the day before. I don't know how they're going to get from the airport to the ball field. Even if the game starts late, they might not want to go home. They might want to go straight to sleep because, you know, it's too late if you're stuck in traffic. And these are some of the pictures that they have. This is the Eclipse Mobile. This is my main promotional item. It's parked right outside. It's a 2018 Dodge Challenger. It's got the diamond ring, chromosphere, Bailey's beads. The Corona goes over the roof, down the sides. And then on the trunk is a panel showing what the sky will look like if you're in the path. For In Pittsburgh, it's going to be about 3 minutes and 10 seconds. The longest in New Hampshire is Clarksville, but they only have three minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> so the longest you can ever have is about seven minutes, um, but those only come around once every 10,000 years. The longest I hope to view in my lifetime is August 12th, 2045. I'll be on the east coast of Florida. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully experience, if I'm, I'll be 84, 86. But I will travel if I still have most of my marbles and I'm on this side of the daisies. Six minutes and six seconds in totality. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a room yet, but I'm not going to wait. Uh, what makes I'll it be longer? Am I like missing something? What makes it longer? Like it's three minutes or six? I would have thought it's, like wherever you are, it's always the same. No, it's, it's all depending because you have to realize the mechanics. The earth is moving. <clears throat> the moon is rotating, is orbiting the earth. So it's moving. The moon is moving, and the earth is spinning. That's why you get a curved path. It doesn't go straight. It curves. And I'll show that to you on another slide. And the moon and earth are orbiting the sun. So even though the sun and moon are appearing to move from your point on earth, the sun is a stationary thing. It's the earth orbiting the sun, the moon and the Earth spinning, as well as orbiting, and the Moon orbiting the Earth. So you got all these different things, distances. You can have a hybrid, which it starts off as an annular, then the Moon gets a little closer to the Earth during the eclipse, turns into a total, goes back to an annular. And if everything matches up perfectly, like the Moon can't be any farther from the Earth, and the Earth can't be any farther from the Sun, and you have a total solar eclipse, that's when you get seven minutes of totality. But it's about once every 10,000 years. It's a longer wait than even for our friend here, the 2079. Will we see a, a comet? I cannot guarantee a <laughs> comet, but <laughs> if there is one up there, you will see it. Oh. Now, it's not like midnight. It's like a deep twilight. But down here, because the sun is so strong, even a half percent or one percent of sunlight, it, you won't see any stars or planets or a comet. There is supposedly Pan Brooks Comet that's going to be between Jupiter and the eclipsed sun. Most people I know, they're just going to be experiencing the eclipse. It's, you know, you can see a comet anytime. You can't see the corona. It's is much, much rarer. So that is in the parking lot. I invite everyone to check it out. Now that you've heard about it and seen it, I do have stickers for you. And once you get uh, an Eclipse Mobile sticker, you're now an Eclipse Knot. Now granted, an Eclipse Knot, not as cool as an astronaut. However, it's easier to become an Eclipse Knot. Much less motion sickness, much easier training. When the Eclipse Mobile leaves the ground, it rapidly returns to planet Earth. If you're an astronaut, you could be up there a little longer, and you could get motion sickness, but the best thing about becoming an Eclipse Knot, it won't set you back 24 minutes. So that's the best thing. But that is in there, and it used to be when I, you know, I deliver in Concord all the time, so people would come for the pizza and stay for the Eclipse. These days they're coming for the Eclipse and staying for the pizza. I don't care which way they go, as long as they hang out and check out the Eclipse. 
again, that is, in the, and it's going to be featured if anyone gets the AAA magazine uh, of Northern New England. Check out the back page because the Eclipse Mobile is going to be featured in the March edition. Finally, somebody I know. There you go. Yeah, I know that column they have. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So very neat. So this is our bill that was signed back in 2021. And there's a physical picture of it here. I'm not going to read it, but it's a really cool bill. So I invite everyone to check it out. Um, it just declares Monday, April 8th, 2024, Solar Eclipse Day, and invites all the residents of New Hampshire to share in this awe-inspiring, for many of us, once-in-a-lifetime, couple of us, twice-in-a-lifetime event, at least here in New Hampshire. The educational bill didn't get through, but we are going to have some, we tried, we are going to have some glasses. And if you have a chance to go north and you got to pull your kids out of school for a day or two, this is it. Disney World, maybe not, but this, um, you really want to do it. There are other ways where the kids can get the day off uh, besides making the, it was a little problematic doing the bill and the timing, but yeah. the reason, there's other avenues of doing it through. Well, they homeschool. And say, you can. Homeschool, so. definitely. <laughs> uh, up in Milan, uh, Maria Chamberlain, she's, she's on our New Hampshire Solar Eclipse Task Force. She's organizing homeschool kids to make them aware of it yeah. and stuff like that. So, whatever you got to do to experience this, you know, that's what it is. And that's the bill. And it's really neat. Uh, the blue marker that he signed, we're using that to sign the New Hampshire Student Solar Eclipse Ambassador Certificates, which we have up here. And I can just about guarantee one of those pens that he used to sign the bill is going to make it into the Solar Eclipse time capsule as well. So unfortunately, the Eclipse Mobile is too big, but the license plate will make it in there. Yeah. So. so here you can see how the paths bend a little bit, and that's because of the spinning Earth and all the rotation that's going on. And these are the two events. And I always like to say I have some slides of Texas. We all got along these paths in northern New Hampshire. You can see how it's really far up north. We all won for this round of eclipses, the six white balls. That square in Texas got the red ball, too. Because within that square, which is about 1,000 miles, square miles, 120 by 100 or 110 by 130, whatever it is, and they got full annularity last October 14th and they get totality. So you think it's pretty crazy up here. It's really crazy. Is that like super rare? Like yes, because like it was separated by six months, 177 days. I don't know how rare. I just know that to have two events, Lakey, Texas, I got a, a t-shirt. Lakey, Texas is a small town of about 200 people. And I talked to them about five years ago, and I said, do you know you have not one but two tsunamis coming to you? And they were like, huh? And then they started to figure it out. And then they started and to figure it out. And now they started saying, because this, right at the crossing fields, that's the nearest town, Lakey, Texas. So I have a bunch of shirts folks can check out. This was in Bluff, Utah, and that's where I experienced the annual. So I collect these. Some of these might make it in the little time capsule, too. And this one, to show you really quick, this is it for the one coming up. And there it is, Colebrook, New Hampshire, Bennett's, Burlington, Vermont, and I think Holton, Maine, or Presque Isle, Maine, too, where it's going to be. So this shows the path more detail. And again, that red center line, that's where you're gonna get the maximum coverage because it's right in the center. And if you think of two balls or spheres crossing, mm -hmm. the longest time is right in the center where you have the longest diameter. As you get near the edge, 
initially from the center line, it drops off slowly, but then it drops off really rapidly. Like Lancaster is going to have totality, but the southern part of Lancaster or Whitefield just outside might only have 10 or 15 seconds. The northern part by the fairgrounds and getting out of Lancaster might have a minute, minute and a half, but if you go five or 10 miles, you jump up to two minutes. And you got to go another maybe 15 miles up to Colebrook, and now you're approaching two minutes. And you continue on to Pittsburgh, and now you're at three minutes. But if you look, and if, if anyone interested can look in the book, because it's two balls or spheres at the edge, it's very short, rapidly increases, and then you get to a certain point, and it increases still, but at a much slower rate. Basically, that middle third is where you want to get to. The center line, uh, I, people, they go, oh, I had five extra seconds of totality. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if you're at the very edge, it's not going to be, it, it just goes by so much quicker. This was our first in the nation proclamation and poster. And an interesting thing we realized, Coos Bay, Oregon, Coos County, Oregon, for the annular, was the first community to experience annularity. They're right on the coast of Oregon. Coas County, oh, spelled weird. the same, but pronounced oh, differently, is the first to declare it. They also have Dixville Notch up there. Sort of, kind of, first voting primary? Uh, who knows? Anyways, <laughs> at the time we did this, we were both first in the nation, so we linked them together. We linked government officials, tourism officials, commerce, students, educators, astronomers, media, um, nonprofits, um, anyone we could. And we didn't get all governors and head of the chambers and the big wigs. We got students. We got, you know, regular folk that are going to have this once in a lifetime site coming to them. And that's a close-up view, and as I was saying about Lakey, this is Lakey right here. It looks like it should be Leaky, but I learned. You're reading my mind. I learned. This is a place in Texas? Never, yeah, never, ever, ever say, oh, you live in Leaky. <laughs> Not good. You want to pronounce it Lakey, even though it looks like Leaky. And so that, and this is all across Texas, but San Antonio, is interesting because they had a heavy duty annular, but for total, nobody's going to be in the southeast part mm -hmm. of San Antonio. They're all going to migrate to the northwest because mm -hmm. the northwest part of San Antonio has totality here and the southeast does not. And then you've got um, Dallas, Austin gets heavy duty. That's why Texas, the music festivals, uh, Lots and lots going on down in Texas. And many of my colleagues are going down there because of weather prospects. The weather will probably be better in Texas than New England. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. And we have a backup plan that I'll show you. So this is yours truly, wearing the Clips Ambassador shirt. This is pretty much, with GPS and everything else, this spot outside of Lakey, Texas, is right about there. This was figured out by Dave and his students years ago. They went to Google Maps, they figured it down to five or six decimal points. Now, am I actually standing on that spot? Let me tell you, there are a lot of scorpions, a lot of barbed wire, and a lot of guns in Texas. So where I'm at is close enough to be on that X. I was good, I was good. I didn't want to go wandering around too much. That's pretty close to a Class six road, mm -hmm. so I got a picture of that. And that was back uh, five, six months ago. And there, right above it, that's the work they did all the way back in 2019. And it's so exciting because the kids get excited about mm -hmm. science and math. Because mm -hmm. this is cool. This isn't balancing a checkbook. This is figuring out that exact <coughs> spot. And that exact spot where they cross within six months, that is super, super, super. It'll be millions of years, if ever, when that happens again. Oh, yeah. So 
Now let's focus a little bit more. This is New England, and you'll notice it's a little tricky to see, but about half the state of Vermont is in totality, and you see that red line, they yeah. get the center line. It goes right through Sheldon Vermont Elementary School. Oh, I wanted them, they have about 3,000 glasses they up there. They don't need there. the day off, huh? Really? What's that? I said they wouldn't need the day. The no, day no, they don't have, it goes through a prison population north of St. Albans. Talk about a captive audience. <laughs> Not very many people <laughs> there will be traveling for the eclipse. But all they have to do is step outside. It goes right through their yard. I tried to get Sherwin Williams to do a paint the center line and stuff like that. And they were interested, but it's one of those things that you have to plan ahead. And about half the state of Maine. If you see Holton, Maine there, yeah. that's pretty cool. They're one of the, they're one doing one of the biggest Ooh, festivals. Right there. This is a coin from there. Oh, from Holton? And they're doing a four-day festival. So if wow. you know anyone in Holton, now there aren't too many hotels in Holton. I think there's two or three. So I think they're partnering with New Brunswick because they're so close to the border. They're right on the border with Woodstock. I think they're going to be busing a lot of people. But you want to remember to take your passport. So. Um, but again, even in Maine, though, it's north of Bangor. So most of the population centers aren't going to get it. For us, definitely far north. Burlington is the largest city in New England that's going to have totality. If it's sunny, they could get 250,000 people show up. So plan ahead, folks. That's all I can say. This is us back in 2019 signing the proclamation at Mohawk Falls. That's just outside of Colebrook, getting close to Dixville Notch. Um, Sally Jensen, the big guy in the center, is our chief financial officer. He manages Eastern Bank in Concord. Uh, moving to the right, that's a high school student, Cody York. He signed our proclamation. Then I think that's um, Hannah and folks from the Balsam Notches and from Mohawk Falls. My uh, fellow Dave McDonald is with the white shirt, that's a Hopkinsonville shirt. We're all wearing the glasses, obviously. The owners of Mohawk Falls, I'm way over to the left. And really cool, the woman just to the left, she's pretty short and Mark's pretty tall. She is Sally Jensen. She is a NASA Master Solar System Ambassador. She's in her 80s, she retired like 25, 20 years ago. For 21 years, maybe now it's 22, 23, she's been working with NASA to promote uh, everything astronomy. So she's the oldest, we call her Ensign Jensen. As far as I know, she's <laughs> the oldest Ensign on the planet. So uh, really, really cool. She put together a video with Holden the School, and I can share with Arlene. There's a website, the New Hampshire Education Board, that okay. you might be familiar with. There's a this, they just put up the website. They're the people getting the hopefully 50, 60,000 um, glasses. I'll send you wow. that link. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Some Board of Education. Those are the progressive total eclipse. <laughs> and that's just a picture of an annual. Ooh, that is and so even 1 or 2% of the sun is so bright, you always have to use the glasses. The only time you can take off the glasses or not use protection is for the two, three, maybe five minutes during totality. You have to be in the totality path. For a partial, an annular, or not in the path of totality, you always have to wear the glasses. These are sunglasses, right? Yes, They're yes. Not just sunglasses. No, you can't use sunglasses, you can't use CDs, you can't use, some people might not remember what CDs are. The only thing that is safe is basically solar eclipse material, solar eclipse glasses. They're equal to like a level 14 welding helmet. The mm -hmm. thing is you don't want to mess around with other means of viewing it unless you're using a shadow box or pinhole camera. Those are safe because mm -hmm. you're not directly viewing. But if you use something else and it isn't strong enough, you're going to do eye damage. And the thing about the eyes, there are no pain sensors in the eye. So you can be doing damage and you won't know it until days, weeks, or even months later. And if you use something that you know is safe, it might be so strong it's hard to see it. 
I mean, the only thing these glasses are good for is viewing a solar eclipse or a thermonuclear detonation. I recommend the former. Use it for an <laughs> eclipse. That's like a eclipse. eclipse. You don't want to use it. You don't want to use it. And this is that. This comes from the Notch Land. And again, make your reservations early. Back in 1932, they were telling people. So what does NASA do when they want to have a star party? This is back to a little bit of a pun. Any idea? They plan it. There you go. And you really need to plan it too, especially now. Because you don't want to... The worst thing you can do is, oh, Sunday night, it's going to be clear. We've got to get up there. Leave Sunday night or Monday morning, you'll never get there. In Denver, in 2017, people got up, sunny, let's go up to Wyoming, see the eclipse. By 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, the state troopers in Wyoming were turning people around at the border, saying, you can't get there, it's a parking lot. You know, there's one highway up there. It, it, people just don't realize how big it is, and you need to think it's almost like a reverse disaster. When there's a disaster, everyone wants to get away or get help there. This is, everyone's trying to get to that narrow path. Millions of people will travel to this. I have a question about th this before. When you were saying um, you could take the glasses off at some point. Yes. But d do you miss any, I can just imagine being like, not doing it at the right time and like getting blinded or something like is it do you, you miss anything if you, you wear them through the whole yes experience? because yeah. what happens is like put the glasses on now i can't it, see a thing you can't see a thing <laughs> so during totality if you wear the glasses you'll see nothing because the glasses are designed to prevent damage from the sun during totality there's no sun so, so you it, should take them off? Yeah, you have to. But how can you be sure you do it at the right time so you don't there, get your there, eyes? There are timer apps, and honestly, there are. Okay. And no, honestly, if you here. glance at the sun on any day, because we've all done it, oh, you'll squint and you'll look away. Mm. When you glance at the sun and you're squinting or whatever, you naturally look away. It happens very quickly. So stage one to stage two is the hour and 20 minutes when the moon is moving across. The diamond ring, which is that last flash, mm -hmm. when you see that, or when you see it about to happen, and believe me, if you're, you're around people or they have apps, you'll know when that's about to come because a giant cheer goes up mm -hmm. and the sky gets dark. It's like nighttime because mm -hmm. it happens, you know, it's getting darker, an hour, hour and five minutes, getting darker, hour and 10 minutes, and then it starts to get really dark fast, and then, boom, it's dark. You see the stars, the planets. It happens instantly. That's when you take off the glasses and you look at the corona. But you also want to look around. An eclipse doesn't happen just above you. It happens above you, around you, and within and it happens with awe above you, with awe around you, and with awe within you. And having inner awe is quite nice. Sharing that inner awe with everyone you meet, <laughs> inviting them to join you in the shadow, that's priceless. And that's why I do what I do. What so, time of day are we talking about? We are talking about, it starts stage one, starts just after 2 p.m. Wow. This is for New that's Hampshire. Night. Yep. Yeah. For an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes, it'll be stage one to stage two. You, you look through the glasses and every, everyone looks, I see it. You see the moon, just a little cut. And then slowly it moves across. And then at approximately 336, 334, that's totality. If you're in Pittsburgh, you have three minutes of totality and then Stage three occurs, which is the sun coming back. You gotta put your glasses back on. Now you have an hour and 20 minutes of sunrise. So on eclipse day, everything is doubled and reversed. It's flipped. You have a five minute sunrise normally, 12 hours of daylight, five minute sunset. On eclipse day, you have your first five minute sunrise 
a few hours of daylight than an hour and 20 minute sunset. Five minutes of darkness, an hour and 20 minute sunrise, and then your second sunset of the day. Not only that, but normally it happens at the horizon. This happens above you. So it's eerie, because on the horizon, it's still light. <coughs> so everything is doubled and reversed on Eclipse Day. And this is how I tie in. I tie in everything with pizza, peace, and penumbras. <laughs> My peace deal, this is our Coas County, New Hampshire. The world stands together in awe. Solar eclipse chasers in the upper right. This is the world, so that is written, solar eclipse chasers, in 24 languages. Now there's one language there off planet. Can anyone spot off the one planet. language that is off planet? What is like a Star Trek thing or something? Klingon? <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> Can anyone spot where the Klingon is? Klingon, that's what I'm saying. Star Trek, you must be talking about. <laughs> Pretty close. This is the Klingon. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very close. Now you know it. These all say solar eclipse chaser. The Klingon one says, may peace prevail on Earth. Can you say that in Klingon? I cannot. <laughs> Although some people, in, I hesitate to say, some people in my network could, but not me. I'm not a Klingon. And I don't play Klingon Boggle either. That's what I'm I don't even win it. Earth Boggle. So that is how we tie in peace and what better planet. All these others, people go, well, I don't speak that language. That's not part of me. For a Klingon, it's off planet, so it applies to the whole planet. And what better mm. folks than Klingons? They're pretty warrior to promote a peace prevail on. Wow. That's how I tie it in together. Fantastic. And then this is our solar eclipse ambassador program with Governor Sununu signing the bill. Each ambassador receives training for middle schoolers and elementary school. We promote no child left inside. <laughs> <laughs> do not want to be inside. And schools in Texas in 2017, the administrators got worried about being sued or somebody taking off their whatever. So nope, stay inside, lower the blinds, we'll watch it on TV. No. Oh, gosh. You want to be outside, but to do that, you have to plan ahead. You have to make sure you have glasses. You have to make sure that the kids aren't daring each other to take off the glasses too early. You have to practice putting them on. Mm. You need more people wow. there. That's why we were working on the bill. Mm. Not every school had to close, but those that stayed open, you didn't want to, you, you, you have to plan ahead. Because back in 2017, people mm. panicked. They went, oh my gosh. And, and But people just aren't aware. We had one lady uh, in Texas, the Dallas, in preparation for this one, put out a thing. Hey, August 21st, we're going to have an eclipse party. Promoting 23, 24, three hours. We'll have glasses. Boom, boom, boom. And a lady wrote back said, oh, it's been a long, hot summer. School just started. Everyone's back to work. Is there any way we can reschedule this for the weekend? No. <laughs> Newsflash. No. You can try to reschedule the sun. It don't work. We can, request. we can have a blizzard on Monday, April 8th, and it's oh still going to happen. It, there's, you can't reschedule the sun. So that's our plan. For the high school students, anyone know any high school seniors or college seniors? Our plan with them was a senior theme of enchantment under the eclipse. Any graduating class can graduate with enchantment under the sea. Only the class of 2024 <laughs> could have enchantment <laughs> under the eclipse. And lots, lots and lots available. Our eclipse mobile ditty is over here. It talks about that. Some of that might be on the website. Very important. Don't let the sight of a lifetime be your last sight. Make sure you have safe glasses. Uh, I have some sites. I'll tell people about the library, my dominoes, or any dominoes if they have them. Yeah, I got uh, a bunch here. Oh, I don't know where they came from. Though. Library. Well, I'll take, yeah. Did, was there a return label or anything on them? Let me, let me I'll, I'll ask. I, I'll ask around tomorrow. Yeah, you yeah. need to find out. Someone might have ordered them. Because um, I didn't. So. It says they're ISO. 
What I would do, I think they're good. Go to this site. Yeah. Go to this site and then check with... Um, well, the trouble is, China, back in 2017, they copied that. Then they put it on it. They sent them out. There weren't a lot, but, you know... But they don't want to take good lessons. Well, well, you have, yeah. you have, you have one, the, first thing the, the regulations the aren't the same over there, and they don't care, and try to see China for if you get eye damage, good luck with that. So, online you want to go to a NASA site or AAS site. AAS is the American Astronomical Society, and use their links, look for it. Uh, the company is a Rainbow Symphony, American Paper Optics, but... At this point, they're so flat out, they're, they, they're maximizing their production, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Can you use those glasses for astronomy for a Yes, day? yeah, anytime, you wanna practice. There's no magnification with them, but we're approaching um, a peak in sunspot activity. So you can see sunspots up there, you won't be able to see them. Another good reason to go to events, do this with other people, is if there's a fellow amateur astronomer like me with a pair, I have solar binoculars, I don't have a, a scope, but there's magnification with that, mm. and they'll share and let you look at it, and it's very cool. And another thing you wanna do, wherever you're gonna be, uh, a week before, you wanna go out and at 3.30 and see where the sun is. If you're planning a big party, and then you didn't realize, oh, that tree's in the way. This isn't a good spot for the building. <laughs> so again, you want to plan it out. My wife drove her nuts because we were out in, in Wyoming. My fellow astronomers taking pictures and stuff, they were practicing for like three days before the eclipse. <laughs> they had their everything set up. They knew exactly where the sun was going to be. And on eclipse day, they were all ready to go. The sun didn't move that up over two days. So everyone asked me, what are we going to do if it rains? What if there's a blizzard? Oh, we got there. Da, da, da. Yeah. In New England, in the Northeast, a lot of eclipse chasers have two or three different locations. They'll go 20 minutes down the road. They'll plan out the night before. We can't do that in New England. Either all of New England is going to be cloudy or all the Northeast is mm. going to be sunny. It's not going to be, and you also can't, mm. in Coas County, you can't a day or two before this pack up 50,000 people mm. and go somewhere else, go to Rochester or something. That's just not gonna work. So what do we do? There are non-visual ways of experiencing the eclipse. And I have some examples up here. Uh, they're tactile, that's the book for NASA. Ooh. They have braille, they have tactile. It's actually a mistake in there. So if anyone can find it, you get a patch. You can find what the mistake is, because it's in the printed and I think it's in the braille. We also have sonification devices that's on top. Huh. That takes light and transforms it into sound. What? Clicks and music and thumps and stuff like that. So who better than members of the BVI blind visually impaired community who never see an eclipse to MC and lead us and now we get to take a sight of a lifetime for most of us, transform it into an event of a lifetime. So that's our plan B in Pittsburgh. We'll have the sonification device hooked up to speakers and stuff like that. And that way, whether it's cloudy or clear or rainy or snow, whatever it is, we're gonna be able to experience it. And then you just have to follow me around the world over the next 20, 21 years, right here, and become get bitten by the bug and click them off and stuff like that. And so, you know, because eclipses are extremely rare in any one spot, but they happen every six to 18 months somewhere on the planet. Now, a lot of times mm -hmm. it's over water. Mm -hmm. My wife said, I'll follow you pretty much everywhere. I'm not going to the Arctic or Antarctica for a friggin' eclipse. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> so some of them go over the poles. So, yeah, yeah. I want to go there. It's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> My wife figured out pretty quick when I said, oh, let's go to Egypt in 27. Okay, okay. And let's go to Barbados in 38. <laughs> and she was like, okay. <laughs> and let's go to Australia in 42. And she was going, it wouldn't happen to be an eclipse at those times. Surprise, surprise, there was. I looked it up. 
And she said, I'm not planning on my vacations for the next 20 years just to track mm -hmm. down eclipses. So now, whenever I suggest something, she goes, is there an eclipse there? I said, no, no. Okay, okay, so she'll do some, but not all. So this is our plan, and again, it's just being more inclusive. They have tents of the solar eclipse material so that people that have issues with putting stuff over their eyes or something like that, or tactile issues now, they can just go under the tent and just look up and see it. Similar to my, in the Eclipse Mobile, we're transforming the sun moon roof into an eclipse roof. So it has a material. So you drive into totality, look up through it. When totality hits, you open up the window. And three minutes, you close the window and view the rest of the eclipse. It's only used for that one time. This is very cool. These two slides in Pittsburgh NASA is working with, uh, it's one of 20 teams across the country. And this is from Florida, but this is exactly like the team from Plymouth State University. The day before the eclipse and during the eclipse, they're gonna launch 60 weather balloons up into the stratosphere and the troposphere, and they're gonna track what happens before and during the eclipse to the air patterns because when the temperature change, the light change, stuff happens. We know a lot about the surface, but we don't know about up there. There's soundscape, which encourages you to listen. How, what do the crickets do when it gets dark? What, what the thing gets very quiet like night. It's mm. really amazing. Temperature drops. Again, a lot happens beyond just the sight of it, and a lot of these can be used by the BDI community too which is really cool because it just includes, everybody gets to participate. And I talk to so many people with vision issues, they don't even, had no sense of an eclipse because it's been so long a visual type thing. This expands it because again, it happens above you, around you, within you, mm -hmm. and that's not just sight, that's lots of other senses and lots of other possibilities. So that's going on at Pittsburgh School on Eclipse Day. That's where the Eclipse Mobile will be. So if anyone's close by, don't try to get there last minute, though. I don't think you will with the roads. And it's a fabulous business opportunity. These uh, Domino's Pizza uh, approved solar eclipse glasses, they're approved for every store in Mexico, the US, and Canada. Because both these events, the annual on the left and the total on the right, go right through there. Does every domino store in North America have these? I doubt it. Mine do, I can guarantee that. My two stores in Concord, 7,000 stores in North America, 5,000 pair per store, 35 million pairs of glasses. By the time corporate in Ann Arbor figures that out, you know, I'll call up and say, yeah, I wanna get 35 million glasses. And they went, I hope you got a time machine because you gotta go back about a year and then we can do that. But I will be chasing these for 20 years and. There are a couple of Domino's Pizza stores in some of the countries that I mentioned. So it's a business opportunity. You can make t-shirts, you can do hats. Um, here's a mug, you can do, I, the, because no one owns it, you even speak the word Super Bowl. You can't do it. You can't say it, you can't use it. You can't have a Super Bowl party or a Super Bowl view. You put five rings together. They're not the Olympic colors, it doesn't matter. They're gonna come after you because everything is copyrighted, you're looking for money. Mm -hmm. This, a solar eclipse, shadow of sun, moon, and you, sun, moon, and earth, nobody owns, so everybody owns it. It's truly for everyone on planet Earth. So the opportunity exists there, and how does the man in the moon, or moon, cut his hair? Any idea? Oh, something about clip, something yeah, clips. Clips. something clips. Eclipse. Eclipse. Very good. <laughs> We're catching Eclipse. on. You are. Well, I'm starting to get this sense of humor. Eclipse Very good. That one's mine. That Eclipse is not it. There it is. Eclipse it. So now you can go and spread that around yeah. and tell yeah. people. So these are some of the resources. Mm -hmm. GreatAmericanEclipse.com is a site, but they have great um, material. Eclipse.aas.org at NASA 
if you want glasses. And here's the thing. Glasses, as it gets closer, availability goes down, more and more people want them, price goes up. So I strongly recommend getting glasses as soon as possible. Or, you know, talk to your local librarian. Um, you know, again, Domino's and Concord. But we're limiting it. I, I started out a year ago with about 20,000 pair. I'm down to about six, 7,000 now. Mm -hmm. and gets closer but I don't I make sure that they're never gonna I'm never gonna charge you more than two dollars for a pair if they're charging you more than two dollars a pair they're price gouging or they're taking advantage of people that waited I okay. won't okay, sell it free yeah and, and those are real though those are fake but you have to be careful no, look at the website oh, they looks don't legit. Know. there's a website when you go that's there. good that's I don't, know. I don't see anything no, no, so that's fine. I have we'll three have ones here. Out the source. I can I give everybody one. Or no. These are from, if it has NSF or anything like that, then though they should charge nothing because as an ambassador, we're not a large, these are given to us free and we're to distribute them to viewing parties. Mm. And you can share them too. But what's gonna happen is, I mean, there's over 300 million people in the US, another, 100, 200 million in Canada, that's half a billion yet in Mexico. We're up to seven, 800 million people, plus visitors, get close to a billion. That's a lot of pairs of glasses. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, people don't think, a lot of people wait till they see the water slowly going out. Well, I'll tell you folks, you wait until you see the water slowly going out, you better start rubbing. Yeah. You better put on your track shoes, it's not coming back in the way it went out. But again, this isn't a natural disaster. I like to compare it to childbirth. They've been happening forever. They're going to happen forever. Most of the time, nothing happens. But if you have friends up in totality, I recommend. I mean, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh with 20, 30 people. We're taking up food, liquid, mm -hmm. gassing up. Meds are really important. Anyone you talk to in that area, you don't want to wait until that weekend to try to fill a prescription. A couple weeks earlier. So it's sight of a lifetime. Um, that's basically the end of it. Any questions? I'm welcome to hand out a couple of stickers, uh, show you any of our material. Um, oh, one other thing. This shows the last annular eclipse and the next one. And on the back is the last total and next total. And I'm going to make a pitch here. We're looking for items for our solar eclipse time capsule. It's going to go into the ground at McCullough Shepherd Discovery Center on May 1st, 2024. So it gives us a month after the eclipse to collect a lot of stuff. 55 years later, on May 1st, 2079, comes out of the ground. My kids will be there, but they'll be in their 80s, and they think Dad's crazy anyways. And they said, Dad, that's 55 years later. I said, do you have anything in your Google Calendar for that day? <laughs> and they went, of course not. Good. So now you have something in your calendar yeah, for that day. <laughs> Pretty you should think it's awesome that they have a dad with such a great mm -hmm. hobby. Well, this is it. Well, it's all my wife's fault. 10, 15 years ago, she said, you know, you really need a hobby. So <laughs> oh, I so that way. I now have a hobby. <laughs> this is pretty neat. This is Mount Gay Eclipse Rum. Now, it is Eclipse Rum. This has been around since in 1910, the twin phenomena of a total solar eclipse and the passage of Halley's Comet inspired the creation of Mount Gay Eclipse, a golden amber blend of age rums. So this is our official toast. A couple bottles are gonna find its way into the solar eclipse time capsule. And in 2079, anyone that was not of legal age, when it went into the ground, 55 years later, are first in line. Now, I can't say a full shot, because my kids will be in their 80s, and even if they led a pretty good life at that point, maybe half a shot or just a couple of drops. But they'll be there, hopefully toasting to dear old dad, who's uh, been on the other side of the daisies for a while. This so, is going to be one big time capsule. I know, how big is the time capsule? Yeah. It's going to be <laughs> about two three, feet, three feet by three feet. Nice. So it's nice. going in. 
Down. Three by three by three. How do they qualify? Anybody can put anything in. I would imagine they would just get too much stuff, and then they would have to. Then we'll have to right? find a site for another site. Number two is two twelve Fisherville Road in Concord. <laughs> Anybody House. know what's at two twelve Fisherville Road? Your house. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's where the dominoes is. Oh, so okay. it's going to be in the dominoes. And then if we have so much stuff, we'll see. who wants to do a solar eclipse time capsule? Now the dates change. For Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and New York, the next one is 2079. New Mexico, the next one is 2045. In Nevada, 2045. In Washington, the next one is 2169. In any given year, is there an eclipse somewhere? Like how often yes. eclipses worldwide? Is there worldwide, six? every six to twelve months. Mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, six to eighteen months. So the shortest time is about six months. You're not going to have one in Australia. So you can and then, plan your annual vacation. Yeah, around yeah, you can plan around it. And again, I start after. The day after April 8th, on April 9th, I initiate the 1211 network. And the 1211 network is a really interesting thing I found, like Coas County and all these other things, from August 21st, 2017 to sometime in 2037, every 1,211 days, there's another total solar eclipse. So I think it's a couple sorrow cycles, which are the eclipse cycles. See, everything just repeats. These things, eclipses, can take tens of thousands of years to repeat. Because it's every 17 or 37, you have 100 or 200 eclipses. It's like a geological time scale, astronomical mm -hmm. time scale. It's, we're used to thinking in days, weeks, months, um, geology and astronomy, thinks in centuries, millennia, and multiple millennia. So it's just, just really, really cool. But every 1,211 days, there's another eclipse, plus a bunch of annulars and stuff like that. In 2038, two annulars, one goes right through Barbados, one goes just off the coast of Barbados. Ooh. How cool would it be if they update the 1910 Mount Gay Eclipse Rump for those two eclipses passing the island? That's going to be tricky because my ex-wife lives in Barbados. So my current <laughs> wife, I don't know how keen she's going to be, but hopefully by 2038, everyone's coming to me saying, hey, you got to do this. But this is the thing. I just started doing this. Anyone can do it. Any sophomores, do you know any sophomores in high school or college? Anybody know any sophomores, second-year students? Okay. So... What should be the theme for them in 2026? Hint, it has nothing to do with astronomy. No, no. Good question. He's going to be there in 2079, I know it. Go back 50 years from 2026. What year do you get to? Yes. I graduated high school in 1977. I miss being a bicentennial, 200th birthday of the US by one year. So now I'm telling all the sophomores I meet in high school and college, hey, in 2026, you can't celebrate enchantment under the eclipse, but your theme should be something to do with the 250th birthday. And all I ask is that you make me an honorary graduate. <laughs> so 49 years after I graduated high school, missed bicentennial graduate by one year, I get to celebrate the 250th year. Now you're talking about red, white, and blue lines. And I'll tell you, Bristol, Rhode Island had a red, white, and blue line down the center of their street marking the parade path. So some high schools should make a red, white, and blue line. Because the trick is you got to do it early. You don't want to wait while 300 other high schools. You want to be number one, maybe two or three. That's what I like to deal with, one, two, and three. So I'm moving you. I hate to interrupt. We do close at eight. Oh, and I'm I sorry. Okay. Have okay. Stuff yeah, any, people want any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you use the, the proper glasses, can you then use a telescope? Yes. 
No. The first thing the sunlight has to touch.